feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small pond in the shrimp tank. Hey everyone, welcome to our post-show wrap-up video here on the Central Pennsylvania Shrimp Tank. I'm your host, Nathan Aboden, alongside of George Book, President and CEO of the West Shore Chamber of Commerce. And if you're just tuning in, you can find a full replay of every interview we do on our website at shrimptankpodcast.com slash Central PA. If you're seeing this now and you haven't done so yet, go to our Facebook page and click that follow and like button so you can stay up to date on all these interviews that we get to do with some of the best and brightest business owners right here in central Pennsylvania. And today is no exception. You undersold yourself, Greg, but today is no <laughs> exception. We have Greg Catcher, who is, he and his wife, Tracy, correct, correct. are the uh, owners and operators of the West Shore Farmers Market. And uh, we had a fantastic interview. We learned about all the family history of the market. We learned about all the, the vendors and uh, you know, how, how Greg is able to manage, uh, and Tracy is able to manage dealing with that. Um, but most importantly, and this is a, a bit of a somber, I think, uh, way to say this, we learned about dealing with adversity. Uh, mm -hmm. If you guys want a story of um, life just kind of kicking you down while you're down and uh, continue to throw blows at you and um, you just standing up, looking at it in the face and saying, you know what? Mm hmm we're going to get through this. Not you got to listen to right. this episode because uh, their story is incredible. So again, go to our website, uh, shrimptankpodcast.com slash central PA to catch the full replay. Without further ado, though, Greg, welcome to the post show wrap up video. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, really absolutely. Enjoyed it. Good. So uh, why don't you just give uh, some of the viewers a little bit of a background on the long history of the farmer's market and uh, talk a little bit about what people can actually get when they come into the market? Sure. The uh, the market has been a staple in, in the West Shore area since 1950. Mm -hmm. My wife's grandfather um, had the forethought to, uh, to to build the market. Mm -hmm. He had previously owned uh, the uh, Hummelstown market. Uh, he had operated that for years and in 1950 moved over to the West Shore mm -hmm. uh, and built this market. And it's been on the same spot, same location uh, since 1950. Uh, one of the big things that happened uh, over the history of the of the market is in 1999, the market burned down, burned to the ground, burned <laughs> for four days, and uh, we had to start from scratch and uh, built the market that we have today. Um, when we built it, uh, instead of putting all the bells and whistles in that a lot of people do now, we tried to keep it as simple uh, mm -hmm. as possible and tried to keep it um, – as similar to the old market as possible. Mm. Now, the old market was built with eight-inch oak beams. Uh, we obviously couldn't do that anymore. Uh, we had to put a sprinkler system in, and hopefully sure. that's going to, you know. <laughs> we could have used that in the old place. That might, maybe um, would have, yeah. But, uh, you know, we, we tried to keep it um, as uh, much of a traditional-type mm -hmm. market as we yep. possibly can. Yeah. Um, for those of you who haven't been to the market, um, it's, it's a, it's an interesting place. It's, mm -hmm. uh, if you're any kind of food you're looking for, you're going to be able to find it at the market, whether sure. it's fresh produce, fresh seafood, uh, uh, meats and delis and bakeries and, uh, prepared foods, hmm. um, lots of things to, uh, to eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, you name it, uh, we have it at the market. Awesome. You, uh, we touched on this briefly, but it's a family owned an operated business. So there are five of you in the family that are currently operating. Why don't you talk about that a little bit, but then I think the relevance of how that then translates to how you actually run and uh, operate with respect to the customers and the vendors that you, you guys have. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's the, the market is uh, and owned and operated by my wife, Tracy, and I. Uh, our son, Riley, works there as well. Uh, my mother-in-law, uh, works at the market, and my wife's uh, uncle also works there. So it is truly a family business. Mm -hmm. um, and we try to run the market um, and treat people, our customers and our vendors, as if, and it sounds cliche, uh, like a family. Um, sure. You know, we, we try to be good people. We try to understand people's situations, and everybody's mm -hmm. gonna, got a different situation. Um, and realizing that we, you know, don't want to kick somebody when they're down. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we want to make it a place that people want to come to. 
that they want to come and make it their happy place. Mm -hmm. um, not right. only our, our tenants, but also, and most particularly, the customers. We want everybody who comes in there to have an enjoyable experience. Mm. And, and not just a shopping experience. Right. Sure. Can you talk a little bit about the longevity of some of these vendors? Because the market's been there since 50, right? Yes. How long have some of these vendors been involved with the West Shore Farmers Market? Um, well, there's a few vendors that have been here, been there quite a long time. Kepler Seafood, uh, I believe, uh, started, they, they had a stand, uh, it was in the Chestnut Street Market, I believe, in Harrisburg. And when that okay. closed, uh, they moved over to the West Shore Farmers Market. And I think that was in 1959, <laughs> somewhere wow, around that time. Awesome. Uh, Schaefer's, uh, Meats have been in the market sure. uh, for close to 60 years, I believe. Um, so, you know, that's, and it and it's, you know, goes down from there. There's, sure. But plenty of folks have been there a lot of years. Right. Uh, a lot of our tenants, once they're there, they're going to be there. Yeah. Um, and I've, you that's know, awesome. we, we take great pride in that because mm -hmm. people, um, right. when they come and they stay, they, they stay because we're right. assuming that they, uh, that they're doing well and they like it there. Yeah. Fantastic. So talk a little bit about the hours of operations uh, for people that are uh, haven't been there yet, know when they can access and, and come in and, and take a look at things. Sure. Uh, the market, the farmer's market is open on Tuesdays from 8 to 3, Fridays from 8 till 5. It was 8 till 6, and we kind of pushed it back during this the pandemic. And then we're open Saturdays from 8 till 2. And we have our specialty shops on the second floor, mm -hmm. and they're open throughout the week. They're open different hours. Okay, um, mm -hmm. they can. They're open throughout the week. Most are closed on Mondays and sun, uh, Sundays and Mondays, but open uh, much of the rest of the week. Okay. Now Great. for Thanksgiving, we're gonna, our hours are going to be a little different. We're open uh, Tuesday and Wednesday uh, from eight till four. We're closed Thanksgiving Day, mm -hmm. uh, and open Friday eight to four and Saturday eight till two. And I'm hoping and I'm suggesting that for Thanksgiving, because it's a little different. Mm -hmm, and I, sure. I know people at Thanksgiving, it gets a little crowded. Some people really like that because it's kind of a festive thing. But this year, we're kind of hoping that folks, um, and at least regular customers, um, will um, schedule it with mm. uh, whoever. If they want to get a turkey, they want to pick it up at, say, 11 o'clock on Tuesday. Mm. Um, and they schedule with the vendors of, of pickup times. So we're also going to suggest that our vendors continue with uh, curbside pickup. Mm -hmm. If you want to get right. something, you can call in and they'll bring it out to the car. Um, and we're also su trying to suggest to the customers that they come at off times. Mm -hmm. right. Instead of everybody showing up at 10 o'clock on Wednesday, <laughs> that uh, maybe come at 2 o'clock on Tuesday. There's yeah. going to be plenty of stuff. Yeah. You know, right. They're right. not going to run Won't out. run out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just to <clears throat> kind of spread it out sure. uh, so that the, uh, the social distancing isn't going to be you know, that much of an issue we're yeah. hoping. Right. Yeah. Well, and if it's any indication, you had mentioned on the on the show about uh, one Friday you had an opportunity while you were um, watching people come in to do a counter, mm -hmm. and you had said there were a few thousand people that had come in throughout the day, which is a lot of people. So, right. um, yeah, if the crowds pick up, you do want to be diligent about uh, maybe being on one of those off times yeah. for mm -hmm. sure. Awesome. Well, um Again, we want to thank you and thank you for being a staple in the community mm -hmm. for um, the grit that you guys showed in the late 90s and early 2000s. You were going through everything you went through. And for everybody at home, if you haven't been there yet, you got to check him out. And, and, and he is genuine. Again, he said uh, it sounds cliche, but he's mm -hmm. very genuine. It is a familial feel when mm -hmm. you get in there. And so if you haven't experienced it yet, you got to you gotta get in there, check out all the vendors that are there, um, support our local vendors, our local businesses who are out there um, doing really cool and unique things, trying to help support their families and help mm -hmm. continue to create a thriving community here in central Pennsylvania. So thank you for helping thank make you. that happen, Greg. Mm -hmm. And um, for people who um, maybe like to plan ahead. My wife's a planner. And so going to some place like that without any idea of what to expect sometimes could be a little overwhelming. Um, so what uh, what's a way for people to learn a little bit more about the farmer's market before heading in? You can go to our website. It's westshorefarmersmarket.com. Okay. 
Great. And on the website, there's good information about their history. You've got a vendor map for the first and select second floors. You can see uh, who all is there and, and have an idea what's there. And so just lots of, of great information. So, Greg, again, thank you so much for, for being on the show. Thanks for being a part of the community. Everybody at home, again, check out the, the farmer's market. Stop in. And if you're going to do holiday shopping, try to do it wisely. Think ahead. Plan things out. Make it a little easier for everybody. Right, George? Absolutely. All right. Good deal. Hey, everybody. We'll see you next week on another episode of the Central Pennsylvania Shrimp Tank. I've been feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank.